Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at the origin of the phrase blonde bombshell. Let's get started. The first blonde bombshell. Blonde bombshell is often used to describe an exciting, dynamic, sexy woman with blonde hair, particularly blonde celebrity sex symbols. The expression seems to have come from, or at least was popularized by, a movie and originally referred to a specific blonde bombshell. In 1933, the platinum blonde Jean Harlow was one of the most popular actresses in Hollywood. That year, Harlow starred in a movie called Bombshell. At the time, bombshell in American slang was already being used to refer to incredibly attractive, flamboyant women, with the first documented case of this in 1860. One of the advertising lines for the film was, Lovely, luscious, exotic Jean Harlow as the blonde bombshell of filmdom. When the film was released in England, they even renamed it Blonde Bombshell, as it was thought that in England the original title sounded like a war film, which the movie is decidedly not. It's actually about an actress who gets fed up with being a sex symbol and just wants to lead a normal life. While it seems probable that this wasn't the first time someone out there uttered the words Blonde Bombshell, those two words fitting together so nicely, this does appear to be the first documented instance of it, with, of course, the first actress to be labeled such being the lovely Jean Harlow. Within a decade, Blonde Bombshell was being bandied around, referring to several different famous women, and of course, as today spread, to mean any particularly attractive blonde woman, and in a few instances, such as Charles Bork, men. Bonus Jean Harlow Facts Both beautiful blonde bombshells Jean Harlow and Marilyn Monroe did their last movies with Clark Gable as a co-star, Saratoga for Harlow, and The Misfits for Monroe. Bonus fact 2. Harlow was not just partially responsible for the blonde bombshell moniker, but also propelled the platinum blonde craze that swept the nation. Howard Hughes even set up platinum blonde clubs, and at one point offered $10,000, about $123,000 today, to anyone who could come up with a hair dye that exactly matched Harlow's supposedly natural platinum blonde hair color. Bonus fact 3. Jean Harlow's real name was Harleen Carpenter. Jean Harlow was actually her mother's name, Jean Poe Harlow, which she decided to use as her stage name. Bonus fact 4. Harlow's mother and father did not get along, the marriage having been arranged despite the objections of the bride. The couple finally divorced in 1922, and Harlow's mother attempted to become an actress, but was considered too old at 34, and was forced to move back to Kansas in order for Harlow's wealthy grandfather to continue to support them. This was a major event in Jean Harlow's life, as when she returned to Kansas with her mother, her grandfather sent her to Camp Chatonka, where she contracted scarlet fever. Obviously, she didn't die of this, so why is this such a momentous occasion in her life? Because many speculate that it was her bout with scarlet fever that ultimately caused the problem that would result in her death at 26 on June 7, 1937. Specifically, her death was probably due to kidney failure, resulting in uremic poisoning, the buildup of various toxins in the blood, causing a variety of complications. She also gained significant water weight during this time, as you might expect from kidney failure. The official cause of death recorded at the time was cerebral edema, basically excess water in the brain. For about a month, Hollow's illness was misdiagnosed as the flu and then a gallbladder infection, even though she had been showing signs of the real problem for over a year. It wasn't until on June the 6th, the day before her death, that she checked back into hospital after having vision problems and the doctor realized that her illness was something more severe. Bonus Fact 5. Harlow's mother was a Christian scientist, who most members of don't believe in receiving medical care, but rather relying on healthy living via highly structured prayer from practitioners, and an individual believing what is wrong with them is simply an illusion of a mortal mind. Because of this, after Harlow's death, a myth rose up that Harlow only died because her mother refused to allow her to be treated by doctors. This isn't the case at all. Her mother only refused one doctor access to Harlow, MGM's doctor, who later claims that Harlow's mother refused to allow doctors to see her due to her religious beliefs. Other doctors were allowed to treat the ailing Harlow. Bonus Fact 6 Unfortunately for Harlow, medical science had not yet advanced enough to be able to do anything about her condition at the time, even had she been diagnosed correctly. The first successful kidney transplant didn't occur until 1954, and even then, the lack of a good method to suppress a patient's immune system so that their body wouldn't reject the transplanted organ was extremely problematic. Initial efforts towards this end included bombarding the patient with large amounts of X-ray radiation, which was partially successful, but also tended to have the side effect of killing the patient. It wasn't until around another decade that tissue typing and immunosuppressant drugs started to be developed and used so that successful 
multiple transplants started to become somewhat common. Even then, it wasn't until around the 1980s when the kidney transplant success rate started to be extremely high, about an 85% success rate in the 1980s. Bonus Fact 7 Holly got married at the age of 16 to 20-year-old Charles McGrew, who received a large inheritance when he turned 21. This allowed the couple to move to Beverly Hills, where, seemingly boredom, neither of the couple worked, and Harlow's friend, aspiring actress Rosalie Roy, helped inspire her to get into acting, first taking roles as an extra and progressively landing larger roles until her big break when she starred in Howard Hughes's Hell's Angels, which debuted about a year after Harlow divorced her husband in 1929. Bonus Fact 8 Harlow's second husband, Paul Byrne, killed himself by shooting himself in the head just two months after marrying Harlow. At the time, there was significant speculation that Harlow had actually murdered him, but an apparent suicide note in Byrne's handwriting was found stating, Dearest dear, unfortunately, this is the only way to make good the frightful wrong I have done you and to wipe out my abject humiliation. I love you, Paul. You understand that last night was only a comedy. It also speculated that Byrne may have been murdered by his estranged and supposedly mentally ill common-law wife, Dorothy Millette, who he had supported through her mental illness before she was released a couple of years before Byrne's death and pronounced mentally fit. He continued to support her after her release and visited her on occasion, apparently remaining on friendly terms. Millette was also found dead a couple of days after Byrne, apparently from suicide, found drowned after taking a trip on the Delta King steamboat and apparently jumping off, but there were no witnesses. Depending on which conspiracy theorist is talking, this either proves that she killed Byrne, killing herself out of guilt, or proves that Harlow did it, or had it done, perhaps using her connections with her former lover and notorious mobster, Abner Wilman. Or, you know, Byrne might have really just killed himself, as all the evidence points to, and the somewhat already mentally unstable Millet may have fallen into a deep depression upon hearing about Byrne's death and killed herself over it. Bonus Fact 9 Jean Harlow was the godmother of mobster Benjamin Bugsy Siegel's daughter, Millicent Siegel. Bonus Fact 10 Harlow's third marriage was arranged by MGM in order to avoid a scandal. Shortly after Byrne's death, Harlow began having an affair with famed boxer Max Bayer, who was married at the time, though already separated from his wife. When Bayer's wife finally officially filed for divorce, she listed Harlow as one of the reasons, because of the affair. MGM hoped that by having Harlow marry Harold Rosson, this would help quell the scandal occurring so soon after the previous scandal of Byrne's suicide. It worked, and once the media storm died down about half a year later, Rosson and Harlow ended their arranged marriage. So I really hope you liked that video, and if you did like it, click like below and leave us a comment to let us know what you think. And also check out a couple of our other videos, which are linked to on the screen now, and don't forget to subscribe for brand new videos every day. Thanks for watching.